Hi Girl Scouts, I'm Megan Sauter, one of the artists at Broadway Clay Studio and Gallery, and I'm going to show you some of our amazing pottery. Here we have some agate ware, which means that the artists took different clay bodies and mixed them together and threw on the pottery wheel. Here you can see a dark brown clay body next to a white one and a tan one, and it mixes together and makes a marbling effect. Here we have crystalline glazes, which means that the potter fired the kiln up to 2,232 degrees and held it there for a really long time so that those crystals could start to grow. And what does that is zinc oxide that has been mixed into the glaze. These pots have been fired in a wood kiln as opposed to an electric kiln. So the fuel is burning wood at a very hot temperature for almost a day to two days at a time. And that wood ash lays on top of the pots and once it heats up, it melts and it makes this technique. These are fired in an electric kiln and you can see when the white glaze mixes with the black, it makes that design. So a lot of glaze testing has to go on to see what combinations make. And there's a difference between a glossy glaze and a matte glaze like this one. These pots have been pit fired, which is one of the earliest firing techniques. When a hole is dug into the ground, the pots are placed inside and then covered with combustible materials such as leaves and sticks and then lit on fire. The burning and smoking is applied to the surface of the pot. Designs can also be carved into pottery. Here you can see a black glaze was painted on and then scraped away, which is a scraffito technique, an Italian meaning to scratch. Other designs can be painted on as well. Transfers can be applied to pottery like stickers to make more of a commercial effect. Here a sticker has been applied and then glaze has been painted over top of it and the sticker has been peeled away. You can also turn clay into jewelry. All you have to do is shape it and poke a hole in it. Now let's take a look behind the gallery in the pottery studio. Here we have pottery wheels and the pedals kind of work like driving a car. You have to press down on them to make the wheel spin and that's how we throw our pottery. We take a ball of clay, put it on the wheel, and then move our hands up the walls. Now we're gonna travel through the pottery studio. Here we have a slab roller, which is how we can hand build with clay. Our pottery wheels, shelves for students, and we recycle all of our clay here. So if you mess up a pot, then what we do is we just throw it on plaster to absorb the water and then we put it in this machine called a pug mill and then that reconstitutes it for us to throw again. This is our glaze chemistry lab so this is how we mix all of the glasses. You can notice these elements are the same ones that are on the periodic table. So we are chemists back here. Silica is the main component in glaze that gives it that glass-like look. Here's the kiln room. We have two kilns that are electric. Once the pieces are made, they have to be dried out. And this is greenware. It turns bone dry, very, very brittle. And then we put it in the kiln and heat it up to around 1800 degrees. And then it comes out and we have to paint it. So we'll glaze it with that glass-like material. After it's been painted, it goes back into the kiln and heats up even hotter so it can get glossy. And then it'll come out looking like that. Hi, Girl Scouts. I'm going to show you how to unpack your pottery badge kit. Now, if you've purchased the ship and make, it's going to come in a box like this or the take and make, you can pick it up at Broadway clay and it may come in a bag. So let's see what's inside. 
You're gonna have a bag that has wet clay in it. You'll have about a pound of clay in there. That's for two projects. Now, if you are not bringing this back to us, you're gonna have air dry clay. Clay comes from underneath the ground and the air dry clay has some glue in it so you can just set out your projects and let them dry in the air. The wet clay from the ground, it'll be a white color. It has to be brought back to the studio to be fired in the kiln. It won't be able to dry on its own. You'll have your pottery badge. You'll have your tools. So you'll have a paintbrush to go with your paint kit. You'll have a wooden skewer. You'll have a carving tool and a paper clip. You'll also have a ceramic tile that's gonna look like this. This is what you're gonna be using for your painting project at the end. Now you'll have one of these two options. You'll have a glaze kit if you're working with real clay and you're gonna be bringing that back to the studio so that we can fire it in our kiln, the big clay oven. If you're not, you're gonna have an acrylic paint set that you can use to paint onto the air dry clay after it's dried and hardened and to paint onto your tile as well. And that's everything in your pottery badge kit. The first thing that you will need is a surface to work on. You can use a cutting board or a piece of cardboard. Then you want to get out your tool set. You'll need your plastic knife, a wooden skewer, and your paintbrush. Make sure you also get a bowl of water. Then you're going to go ahead and get your ball of clay and go ahead and take it out of the bag. And this is one pound for two projects. So we're going to separate it into two parts. The first part is going to be for our pinch pot. And then the other part we're going to store away for our art project. Then you're going to pinch off a piece about the size of a large bouncy ball or a very large grape and then pat that other piece into a ball. And if you're working with air dry clay, you may find your hands get sticky, but don't worry about that, we can clean them afterwards. We are now gonna start the process of our pinch pot by taking our thumb and pressing it into the middle of the ball of clay, just like this. We are then gonna start to rotate it using one hand to rotate, and the other hand is going to press towards your fingers that are on the outside of the pot. As your thumb starts to press those walls, it starts to make the walls thinner and it opens the pot wider. So the more that you press, the wider that the pot is going to get. So once it gets large enough, you can put both thumbs in. You can then start to rotate it with your fingers on the outside and moving fairly fast. The goal is to get the walls even thickness all the way around. So fill and see if it's thick on one area and you can keep pinching that to get it even. If you pinch too much and it starts to get paper thin, you can always just roll that right on over into the rest of the clay. If you notice you start to get wrinkles or tears, you can always patch it back together and then use your finger to smooth those lines. Now you can see why this is called a pinch pot. Now the one area that we have not pinched is the base, so I want you to press both thumbs at the bottom, cupping your hands and pressing toward your fingers. The reason you want to cup your hand is to keep it in that curve shape, more like a bowl, and so it doesn't turn out like a plate. Now we are ready to put a foot on the bottom of the pot. We're gonna make the foot with that other piece of clay. We are gonna start by squeezing it into a snake shape or what's called a coil. And you can even roll this on your um, cutting board or cardboard that you have, the flat surface. And if that's not working for you, you can always roll it in the air too. And so this is called a coil and we want to get it long enough so that we can make a donut shape that will sit on the bottom of the pot and that'll make the pot sit up on the surface of whatever you're sitting it on. So where it attaches, we can't just stick it together because clay is going to work like a deck of cards. It's going to slide apart. 
So you have to scratch the ends to almost make it like Velcro. And when you scratch each end, it's opening up the clay particles and you can use your paintbrush and add some water. That water is the clay glue. It's called slip. So scoring and slipping. Then you can smooth those lines together so it looks like one solid piece of clay and you can't even see the attachment point. The next thing is to attach it to the base of the pot. But we have to score and slip it. We can't just stick it on there. This goes for the air dry clay as well as the real clay. You want to scratch, 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 scratch everywhere. Then add some water. And you can even dip your finger in water if you don't have your paintbrush right by you. And then you're going to sit it on the base of the pot and we're going to pat it down so that it really joins it. Now, where that connection line is, we want to smooth it because that could be a breaking point and we don't want the foot to break off the pot because then it's going to wobble around. So we're using our plastic clay knife and we're grabbing some of the clay from that coil from the foot and pulling it up onto the side of the pot walls. As we do that, it's almost like it's weaving the clay particles together. So it's becoming one solid piece. And you can even use your paintbrush and go around that line because that water is just glue for the clay and you can smooth it with the water. Now the last thing on the bottom of the pot is to write your name. You can sign it and you can even write the date. Now we can think about the surface decoration for the outside of the pot. Using that wooden skewer, you can draw on it just like you would with a pencil and paper. Draw whatever kind of designs you want into the clay, or you can use your knife tool and act like a stamp and press into the clay. But you'll want to make sure your hands on the inside supporting that wall as you press on the outside. So you can make designs that go all the way around, like this chevron design. And if this is air dry clay, it's going to have to set out for a couple of days before you paint it. If you want to use the glaze with the wet clay, the clay that has to be fired, you can just go ahead and dip your paintbrush in the paint pots and paint with the glaze. Don't treat it like watercolor though, we want it nice and thick. Once you finish painting it, you can bring it back to Broadway clay or the air dry clay, you'll be using the acrylic paint sets to paint after it's completely dry. And that's our pinch pot. Hello, I'm another artist at Broadway Clay, and I'm here to show you guys today how to make your lump of clay into a super cool pinch pot monster. You are going to need a little water, your paper clip, I would have your skewer handy and the ball of clay that you did not use when you made the pinch pot with Megan. What you need to do with this is take a little piece off. So you're going to have most of it left to make the majority of your monster and then you're going to have some pieces to add extra. If you want your monster to be a little smaller, don't use quite as much clay. As you saw in the pictures before this, you can start to get some ideas about what your monster is going to be. This is your artistic project, so you guys can be very creative with this, but let's start with the stable form first. You are going to take it and pound into a ball, and what I'm trying to do is smacking this in my hand into a ball shape and making sure that if I have any little cracks or anything that we are going to smooth those out. Now, once we have this shape, we are going to go ahead and push our thumb in here, just like you did in your other one. We're going to keep this pinch pot pretty thick. So I'm gonna make sure that this pinch pot is about as thick as my pinky. Press this towards my palm for my last little bit. If you're getting a little bit of cracking, your clay might be drying out a little bit, just take a little bit of water and smooth things out. 
Now, if you use too much water, and this is starting to get all bumpy everywhere, it is not going to work well for you. So don't just continually take extra water and put it into your piece of clay. The next thing I want you to do is start to think, where would you like the eyes? The eyes. I'm gonna make a couple of round balls. I'm gonna take these and smush them together, roll them in my hand. And you are going to be attaching these somewhere up at the top. You can have more than two eyes. You could have one eye if you wanted. That is up to you. But what you will have to do is take your paper clip and you will have to scratch and add a little bit of water. We call this scoring and slipping so that these two pieces will stick together. If you don't scratch both of these pieces and add a little slip, it is probably going to pop apart in the kiln. It may not pop apart right away, but it eventually will. In the kiln, your pottery is heating up to really almost 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and as it heats, it is actually has those molecules moving around and it is shrinking. So you want there to be a nice tight grip. If you just have two pieces that are heating and shrinking and there's nothing in between them, they're gonna pop apart. And I like to wiggle them into place. I wiggle and press. And I'm simply going to take my skewer, this end, and I'm gonna put some little eyeballs in there. If you wanted, you could add some eyelashes, lots of different things. Do you want this to have a scale? Do you want him to have a tail? I'm going to show you how you can make a coil. So I have a little ball of clay, and I'm gonna smush this out kind of into the shape of a squatty, snake. I'm going to take this and roll against the table. Right now it's a little oblong so I'm going to kind of press it back into a coil shape and I'm going to roll that back out again. And this would be far too skinny just to stick off of your piece. Anything sticking off that doesn't have a lot of surface area is probably going to break. So if I want this to be a tail, or ooh, maybe it could be a mohawk. I'm gonna make this a mohawk. And my guy wasn't sitting very well on the table. I'm gonna smash him down just a little bit. I'm going to add a little scoring and slipping right here. Scoring and slipping here. I'm gonna wiggle that on, and I'm gonna start shaping this into a little mohawk type thing. Score it, score it, add your slip, wiggle it down. I'm pressing on the inside and on the outside. I'm gonna squeeze that into a shape. Now, let's work on a tail, which is kind of a modified coil. So right now you have used a pinch pot, we've used a ball of clay, and now we made a coil. Let's do something called a slab, and a slab is kind of a flattened piece of clay. So I'm gonna make his tail into a triangle shape. You always want things to be a, about the thickness of your pinky. If they get too skinny than that, like this, you've got to make sure they have multiple points of connection onto your pot. This is a slab. It is a flat piece of clay. I want there to be more surface area here, so I'm going to press that down. So this is gonna be my guy's little tail. It's gonna go right here. So what do I have to do, everybody? Yes, you need to score and slip where you're going to be attaching these. So here we go. 
I can kind of shape this a little bit. There's my tail. As you look in here, there's lots of different things. We can add teeth. You could add a tongue. Got about this much more clay yet left. You don't have to use all of it. I'm going to show you guys how to make a few little teeth. So I'm going to give him some fangs. I pulled off a piece. I'm going to kind of start pretty much with a ball shape. I'm going to give him a little tooth shape. I'm going to smash this down so I have good surface area. I'm going to give him a fang here and here. Add, yes everybody, scoring and slip. So there's a couple little fangs. And then the other thing I often have kids ask me is how to add a tongue in here. So I'd probably use most of the rest of this. If you wanted to save some, you could. But I would just simply, I'm going to give him a pointed tongue, I think. Shape this down and you are once again, you've done pinch, coils, slab. This is going to be a slab shape. As long as it's touching the inside of your monster a lot, it could be a little bit thinner, but you have to have a lot of points of contact if you're going to be doing that. So I am smoothing out my tongue. I'm gonna attach it into the back of his mouth, which is a little rounded. I'm going to score. I'm gonna add a little tongue line on here. Add a little water for my slip, and I'm going to attach this in now. So right now it's sticking out. I would suggest that you kind of bring your tongue down here, and we let it attach to the front as well. That way it has two points of contact, and we know it's not going to fall apart. All right, so here is my little guy. To make sure that he sits on the table, I kind of give him a little tap. You can go back and you can add some stripes to this. I'm using this end of my skewer. You could add other details. If you have something you could that could stamp, you could add some stamps to this. There are so many directions, but there are lots of ways that you can add details. Once you're finished creating your monster, I would suggest letting him sit out on the table for a half an hour to firm up. Once you get to that point, it's time to glaze. Now, I'm hoping you remember from before that you do not want to glaze the bottom of anything because glaze gets sticky in a kiln and it will ruin our kiln shelves in your pot. What I want you to do is add decorations. Anything that you do not glaze is going to be a creamy white color. We will actually be dipping your pot into a clear glaze when you're done. So what you're doing right now is just adding the glazes that are going to be colorful. This, if you are working with our glaze, this is not paint. It is actually a glass that will fire to temperature. Now, if you're not planning on bringing your pot back to us, don't worry, you're just going to be using acrylic paints. I would probably let your guy sit out until he was almost completely dry and then be very careful as you paint him. When you get finished painting him with your acrylic paints, just let him set out for a couple of days until all that paint will dry. Either way, you're going to be using something to add color to your pot. Let's go ahead and open up your paints. Usually you push down on one and you pull up on another. You may have all different kinds. I have primary and secondary colors in my paint tray today. You should also have received a brush. Now you can use the end of this brush. You're gonna be able to use it in this direction for a thick line, in that direction for a thin line, and you can even use the tip of your brush as a dot. So let me go ahead and just paint a couple of things here. I want this guy's tongue to be purple. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to be careful. I'm using the thick part 
of my brush and I'm gonna paint his tongue. This glaze dries fairly quickly. If you want it to look kind of painterly, put one coat. If you want it to be a little bit thicker and more opaque, use two coats. I still have my water bowl over here. I'm gonna rinse my brush out in between colors, get all the color off. And I'm going to paint his teeth blue. I'm going to dip my brush end into the glaze. And I'm just going to kind of put a dot of clay in there. This is a good way to get into small spaces. Give him some red eyes. I've got all of these little details over here. So I can actually turn my brush sideways when I paint these. And that way it gives me a thinner line. At this point, I'm about done. And I want you to see that I haven't glazed everything. And I would suggest if you are going to paint one color next to another, just like with watercolors, that you would set your little guy aside and let him dry up a little bit. If you're using acrylic paints at this point, just set your monster out and let him dry up. We'd love to see a picture of your completed monster. Or if you've used glazes, I want you to set this out to let it dry, but then I want you to wrap it back in a Kroger bag. It is a lot safer if you bring your pottery back to us when it's still at a leather hard, still wet stage than if you let all of the water dry out. That makes them extremely fragile. They are actually much stronger at a leather hard stage and you will put them on the shelf outside of our shop. I hope you guys had fun doing your creative project. In this part of the video, we are going to show you guys how to design your tiles. The first thing you need to do is to come up with a design. I like to just take my tile and trace it out a few times on a piece of paper. I would do this with a pencil. However, I'm going to switch over here to a Sharpie marker because you can see it so much better on the screen but you should be able to fit about four different ideas onto your paper. And you need to be thinking to yourself, what do I want to put on my tile? It could be just a design. It could be a drawing of some sort, but what I will caution you is these need to be simple, and have big lines on them. If you are trying to put things that are really small onto your tile, it is going to be impossible to paint those small of lines. Look at your paintbrush and think about what size it is. So mine's like this, it's got the side, and if you saw from our other videos, you can actually use the tip of your paintbrush to make some dots. You may have some other things around the house that you could use too. For instance, you've got your skewer. It's got a, a bigger circle on this side, and on this side could be a skinnier circle. I would say if you wanna do a flower, instead of doing 10 flowers on here, just do one. So you could do something like this. And you guys are gonna do this in pencil so you can erase. I'm gonna do mine in Sharpie so that you can see it. So you might do some kind of a flower. And in the background, maybe you did some polka dots back here, because you could definitely do that with the tip of your paintbrush. Um, if you wanted, you could do a landscape, but let's keep it pretty simple. We could do some hills we could have some mountains back here. You could have a sun. You might do some kind of an animal. So if you want to do a cat, I would suggest just the head and not the whole body. So you might do a kitty cat.
anything smaller than this eye is going to be very difficult to paint. Something else you could do is just a design. So you might go in and say you're going to do some circles and some wavy lines. You want to make sure things are big enough. Maybe you did a few stripes on here. Keep it simple, but you could do something that was just abstract. The Once you decide what you want to happen with these, I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'm gonna do the flower. I'm gonna take my pencil and go like this on the back of my paper. Then I am going to lay my tile underneath this and I'm going to draw my design onto here. Just go over it with my pencil. A ballpoint pen would work as well. And I'm just gonna get my major design on here. When you lift that up, you should see a faint, and it's difficult to tell, design on here. To make this work better, just put more pencil lead on there. Or you can just go ahead and trace from one to the other. I am then going to take my pencil and I'm gonna go over this. Any pencil line that you put on your tile will burn off in the kiln. So if you make a mistake, you can do erasing. Even if you can't erase it all, understand it will not be there when we get done. I would also suggest putting your name on the back of this. We will go over this with a special clay pencil, like this one that's called Underglaze, and it will actually show up. But if there's something you wanna write on the back, you can do that. And everyone remember, we do not glaze the back of our pottery or the bottoms. Once you get to this point, if you have acrylic paint, you just go ahead and start painting with your acrylic paint and you're just going to be able to layer that and paint like you normally would. If you're using glazes, remember, you can paint the edges of things, but you don't wanna paint the bottom. And you will simply go into here and you will start your painting. What you don't paint is actually going to be a white. I'm going to start kind of with my light colors and I'm gonna paint my dark colors on top. As an art teacher, I always suggest painting the background and light colors first. Okay, so I have just finished painting, and I wanna remind you all of a couple things. Two coats are going to make your area look more opaque. You do not have to paint the entire thing. What you don't paint will be white. So if I had chosen to do polka dots in that background, I'd probably just not painted it and just put the polka dots on there. In my leaves, I just painted one coat, which will make that look a little more painterly, and I layered colors on top of each other. And that's something I've known from painting. The colors will show through a little bit, but not a lot. So I hope you guys have fun with your tile ideas. Take some time to write them out. Put lots of pe um, pencil on the back of this before you trace it on top of your tile. And if you're going to bring this back to us, you can let this whole thing dry and then just put it in your box and we will be glazing it for you. Have fun.